I, I'm an Australian. I was uh, born in Melbourne, uh, down down south from here, and uh, came to Canberra first, uh, where I now live, um, back in the uh, mid 1970s. So I've lived here now for 35 years or so, and um, uh, I've seen um, uh, you know, tremendous change over that time. When I came came to this uh, part of Australia first, it was a fairly green and verdant place, I think, and uh, I've seen the kinds of changes that Tim Flannery talks about, you know. Like, for example, uh, just north of uh, Canberra, just north of here, um, there's a large lake, Lake George. What's your personal story of this lake? Well, well I, I came here first, past this lake, on my way to university as a, as a student way back in the 1980s, and uh, it was a full, it was full of water and um, um, people sailed on it, um, people even drowned on it. Uh, it was a, you know, an impressive body of water, and it was always here, lapped against the road. Uh, and as I've come backwards and forwards along this highway, um, past the lake, um, over the years, I've, I've, you know, I've been a keen observer of what's going on. Uh, the water birds are largely gone because the water's not here normally. There's a little bit of water here at the moment because we just recently had the best rain that this region's had in eight years. But um, in a few days it'll all be gone again. It'll be all dry. Just the sheep munching on the grass as they walk out across the, the paddocks. So, I, you know, it's, for me, this, this, this lake is a, in microcosm what's happening to the climate. I mean, there are vari- were variations in the past in water levels in this lake, but I think a lot of what we see now is, um, is actually uh, attributable um, uh, in good measure to, uh, to hu- human um, activities in the planet. You know, it's been dry for a long time, and, um, and I'm, I'm not very confident that we'll ever see, um, again, the water levels that were once here. The, uh, the reason that I think this lake is, is, uh, is dry now all the time is that uh, this whole region has been in deficit in terms of uh, rainfall. We've had far less rainfall um, now going back many years than, than was the average. Uh, we had a really, really bad El Nino event in the early 1980s which uh, dried everything out and I don't think this part of Australia has recovered from it since. We've had periods of, uh, of rain like the recent showers that were here but I, I don't think that uh, and I'm, not, I'm not alone in this. Most people, would, I think, would uh, would agree that we're we're now drought seems to be the norm rather than rather than the exception. We get a lot more of it, and so because it's mostly drought conditions that we're we're living through, winter rains are not coming like they used to. Um, the summer summer rains which we're getting now are, um, are a result of cyclones coming in off the northern northern coasts of Australia and being swept up and and bringing a bit of rain, a bit of relief to us. But that's not normal. Uh, in the, in the uh, longer term for this area. So, so it's all about lack of rainfall over long periods of time. That's why the lake's dried up. And, uh, you know, you'd have to be a real optimist to think that, uh, that rainfall's going to come back any time soon. I, I think that the, the climate change that uh, is being caused by humanity uh, is, um, is a function of the, you know, what's happened in the last 200 odd years since the industrial revolution and the, the development of the, the developed world and, and in fact the, um, the carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere that's producing the green, enhanced greenhouse effect really is at, at the door of the, um, the developed world not, not the developing world that's going to change as uh, the economies in China and India um, get to you know, sort of larger and larger and more and more important but um, at the moment, the climate change we're, we're experiencing is mostly due to the developed world, and Australia's part of that. Um, we are, um, in per capita terms, probably the biggest emitters, or second biggest, maybe Saudi Arabia's bigger, but we are one of the biggest emitters of carbon dioxide, um, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere of any nation on, on Earth. We're only a small country in terms of total population, but in per capita terms, it's very significant. Every time a new Australian is either born or emigrates here, they add to it. I think... You know, it's probably 100 times more uh, emissions or more of one Australian compared to an average rural Indian. Perhaps it's three times, I think, is the figure I saw for, uh, for a Northern European uh, Australian, Australian emissions. So, so we are contributing as individuals uh, a great deal. And uh, I think, you know, I think it all, as individuals, we all ought to uh, um, recognise what's going on and... Um, and we can realise that the changes that are being wrought on the environment are not just affecting humans, they're affecting all the animal species and plant species on the planet. We actually have a, uh, a role as custodians and guardians of, of now and the future to do something about this. And so I think 
that as individuals we should all do what we can to uh, to to uh, make a difference. And so, in my own family, you know, I ride a bicycle to the office every day. My wife rides a bike as much as she can. Um, we've bought a smaller car. We've uh, put in an evaporative cooling system rather than a uh, reverse cycle air conditioner because it uses less energy. Uh, we put a solar panel on the roof to generate electricity and put it back into the grid. These are all small things, but if they if enough people do it, we can it'll add up to a really important contribution, I think. And then the other level, the other aspect that I'm involved in is is the much larger engineering aspect, the idea of how you go about powering a whole society. I mean, it's one thing to do it as an individual, but Ultimately, you need big power stations producing uh, power, reliable power, around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's where the geothermal energy project that I've um, sort of helped to develop from the beginning here in Australia, uh, leveraging all the things that have been done overseas before, uh, it comes from. That's, that's where, that's where I'm putting my energies to try to um, make a difference at, at the big level as well as the small. Mm-hmm.